as Lucy mentioned, we'll be, co we'll be covering chapter four. Um, I borrowed these slides um, from the previous cohort, um, but this is, will be a case study on ER injuries or emergency room injuries. And so it's really to tie everything that we've learned in the previous three chapters together and to demonstrate it in an example um, in this Shiny app. So we'll learn to create a more complex Shiny app and get an idea of how to build your app based on exploratory data analysis that you do. Um, and then we'll create the app step by step. So we'll start with the prototype or more basic version first and then slowly build on top of that. And we'll get more comfortable using the techniques we've learned so far. So this chapter is about building a more complex app with the tools we learned in the previous chapters and we'll use the following packages. So as usual, the Shiny package, Vroom to read our files into a data frame and then the tidyverse packages. So I think specifically for this one, we're using plier, dplyr and ggplot for the visualizations. So for the data, I thought this was an interesting data set um, we'll be exploring the National Electronic Injury Surveillance System, which covers accidents reported from a sample of hospitals in the US. Um, we're only using the 2017 data um, just because it's a very large data set. And so for the data set, we have the following variables. So date, age, sex, race, body part, diagnosis, and the location of the injury, um, as well as um, the primary product associated with the injury and a brief story of how the accident occurred or it provides a bit more context. Um, we also have what's called a weight attribute um, to estimate how many people the current case represents if the data set were scaled to the entire US population to give us a better um, idea of how often the injury actually occurs um, in the US. So first, um, we start by downloading the data. Um, this function um, downloads all of the files we'll need. And so then we use Vroom to um, store it into a data frame called injuries. And so we see here we have a lot of rows and a lot of data just from 2017. Um, the product names. And so um, this tells us um, each code is assigned to a specific type of injury. So if it's if you're injured by knobs, then you get the code 464. Next, we have the population data. So this gives us um, some of the characteristics that we mentioned earlier, age, sex, and um, the population corresponding with it. So for this example, I guess age zero is, I guess that refers to newborns. Um, so newborn females is around, um, 1.9 million um, in this data set. Yeah, 1.9 million. All right, am I reading that two, four, six? Yeah, all right. Um, anyone can feel free to uh, jump in and correct me um, or ask any questions. So for the exploration stage, um, as motivation for the app we wanna build, we're going to explore the data um, so we'll take a look at accidents related to toilets, um, which at least for me, when I initially read it, it was a bit odd at first, but um, I think there's some interesting trends that the author finds um, in this data. So the product code is 649. So we use the filter function to find all the injuries associated with it. And there are 2,993 injuries um, related to toilets. Um, we're interested in how many accidents related to toilets we see for different locations, body parts, and diagnosis. Um, so first, we count or find the frequency um, of these injuries in different locations. So most often, it's in the home. Um, and then we find what body parts are most often injured. And so first, we have um, the head. Um, which I can understand. Um, the lower trunk actually confuses me a bit more, but if anyone has any ideas, um, <laughs> you can let me know. Um, so and again, me, I, I think at the top there, the counts, you are, I, I'm a bit uh, confused. I think you have count, then you will name a column, 
where you say all the weights, you rename it to WT. But if you check that code at the bottom there, we are not seeing the count for all the weights. Um, the count, oh, you mean like, are you referring to this? Like we're not seeing the rest of them? The okay, okay, rows? okay, 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 mm okay. -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe you can go into options and then um, you can set it so that it displays the full thing. But yeah, it's a good point. It doesn't show all of them. Yeah, and then next we have um, a count of all the diagnoses. Um, so most of them are other and not stated. <laughs> Maybe it's because they're too embarrassed to say what it is. I don't know. Um, and then um, contusion, internal organ injuries, et cetera. And then we'll create a plot for the number of accidents for different age and sex. And at least for me, um, who doesn't do, as someone who doesn't do data analysis too often, this chapter was helpful. Um, in addition, explaining shiny apps, going through the, you know, some of the stages of exploratory data analysis. And so here they create a summary variable, which has a lot of the key variables we're looking for. So age, sex, um, and also the rate and it stores it in the summary variable, which we then put um, into our ggplot function um, to generate this graph. And so we see here um, that for males, that's the blue line, um, more of them get injured at age three, but then as it increases over time, um, we begin to see females um, have more frequent injuries for this incident. Um, the author speculates or theorizes that um, this is due to osteoporosis and um, bone weaknesses, or os specifically osteoporosis um, being more frequent in older females um, and resulting in ER visits. So the goal is to build an app based on this data, um, which out outputs the tables and plot for different products, which the user selects. Um, and I think this is a great example for a Shiny app because um, as the author said, it makes sense to create a type of user interface where you can just select the different options um, in a graphical user interface rather than say with a function um, that automatically does all of this for you. So for the prototype of our app, the first version of our app will be a dashboard where the user can choose a product and get the tables and the plot we have seen in the previous chapter. Um, so he, we start really basic first, um, and the author makes some good points as to um, starting with this sort of broader outline and then building more complex features from there. Um, it's something that I wish I was told when I was building my first Shiny app, um, just because it had you know different tabs and features. And so if I stop to create a prototype or just a broad outline, um, even to draw you know the React graph or React logs, um, that would help me think more clearly about how I want it to be constructed. And so I think this is a good example of um, building a more basic version first and then adding um, smaller, more details, more detailed features afterwards. So we start with the code for the UI. Um, so we have first the input um, where the user can select uh, the product code or the type of injury they're looking for. And then based on what they select here, um, the tables um, change accordingly. And so we get the diagnosis, um, the body parts injured for that uh, particular type of injury um, and the location. And then we graph it like we saw in the previous slide. And the code on the server end, um, as Ryan um, spoke to us about last week, um, we use um, shiny reactivity um, and store it into the selected variable. And this makes it more efficient um, whenever um, the user changes the input code. And that gives us um, the diagnosis table, the body part table, and the location table. And then the reactive for plot data. So just like writing code um, in your usual script and not in the Shiny app. Um, he writes it or stores it in the summary variable and then um, uses that to create a plot. 
So I thought this note was interesting. Um, I didn't see it in the textbook. I think whoever created these slides for the previous cohort wrote this. Um, the reactive for plot data is only used once. You could also compute the data frame when rendering the plot, but it's good practice to separate computing and plotting. Um, this makes it easier to understand and generalize. So I think what they're referring to here is um, this is the computing part first. So you're computing or you know, creating the variables like rate and organizing the data, and then you plot it afterwards um, in a separate section. And so um, I think it's an interesting tip just because I'm still struggling myself to wrap my head around um, why that's the case. I'm definitely taking their word for it. Um, it's just that when I looked into it, so actually I'll show you what I have so far. It's the wrong one. So the only thing I could find that um, talks about separating plotting and computation logic um, was um, on this forum where they talk about it for MATLAB and how it's important to do it. But other than that, I don't really um, completely understand why it's considered best practice. So if anyone has any ideas, um, feel free to jump in or let me know on Slack afterwards if you find the answer. Um, but anyways, um, I'll show a prototype um, or show what the app actually looks like that um, we built from that code. And so here are the products. And so let's say we wanted to look at softball and then it automatically updates all of this for us. All right, and so now the next steps are um, to improve the app and add some more features. Um, are there any questions so far or something that I could review? I don't know if I went too fast or anything. Um, I'll take that silence as I'm good to go. All right, thanks. Um, okay, so now for the next section, we're going to polish tables. So the prototype version of the app has very long tables, as we saw um, in the example that we ran. Um, to make it a little clearer, we only want to show the top five um, for each table and then lump together all the other categories um, in a sixth category. So as an example, the diagnosis table for all products would look like this. And so um, we're creating this, we're not creating, but um, for the diagnosis variable, um, we're lumping um, all of our uh, diagnoses. So first we're um, converting them to factors um, and then looking at those that occur most frequently. Um, and then once we have those that occur most frequently, we're only keeping the top five, which is what we have here. Um, and the FCT or factor lump and the factor infrequent or infrequency functions, these come from the four cats package, I think, um, in the tidyverse. And so then we display it over here. So we see that the first five are displayed the most frequent, and then all of the other categories are lumped into this other category. So the next section, which is rate versus count, um, we're giving the user the chance to plot the data relative to 10,000 people or in absolute numbers. So we're taking the rates of taking into account um, how often um, the injury actually occurs um, in the population. Um, and so the new UI looks like this. So, I believe the new section, yeah, it's um, having the choices. So you can either choose to look at the count, so just how frequently the injury, injury occurs, or the rate, so taking into account the population. Um, so now the user has that choice um, when they click on that box that was in the top corner of our app, and then um, the usual outputs. Um, then on the server side, the plot rendering changes a bit. So we have an if else function, and this is to account for whether we choose to display as a count or rate. And so 
um, if it's a count, um, it's the same code that we've seen in our prototype. Um, but if it's um, the rate, then um, we run this code instead, um, which really just um, changes the Y variable and um, the Y axis label. So injuries per 10,000 people. And the last section, um, so now that we've added that option, the last thing we're gonna add to our Shiny app in this example is a narrative. And so now we want a button to sample an accident story related to the chosen product and display it. So we're gonna um, give them more context to the user on, on that injury if they'd like by clicking a button. So we're gonna add um, the following UI elements. And so, um, specifically, we're adding um, this action button. So we use the action button function. And so this displays to the user to tell me a story and they click the button. And then once they do on the back end, um, what it does is that it samples or um, it pulls um, a narrative or story um, of that injury and displays it to them. And so in the back end, we need an event reactive that triggers when the button is clicked or the selected data changes. Um, I think we'll cover this sort of thing in future chapters. So um, you can ask me questions about it. I don't think I'll <laughs> have the answers, um, but that's what we're using. And so um, the resulting version of the app um, can be shown here, which I'll load. So we'll go back to our toilets example. And so now you can see, um, do we have an option for count or for the rate? I don't see it, or maybe I'm missing something. Yeah, this isn't, uh, this is an older version because we don't have the, this is like the prototype because we don't have the option for the rate and the last narrative option isn't there. Maybe they have the wrong link. Let me see if I can find it in the textbook. Okay, here it is. So this is what we've actually built. Um, or this is the code I just showed you. And so you can choose between rate and count. And then tell me a story. And so once we click that, um, it, it samples from the list um, of injuries and gives you a narrative for one of them. So it says 66-year-old 60, female um, states drop, dropped a knife and cut lower leg. Um, yeah. And that's pretty much um, our Shiny app. And so that's also the end of my presentation. Um, I think I covered it pretty fast. Um, we're only 20 minutes in, so let me know if there's anything you want to go over again or discuss in more detail. Um, if I didn't explain it well, I'm sure whoever was covering the chapter um, in this previous cohort <laughs> did a better job, so the video is there for you to see. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, as Lucy mentioned earlier, I would say this, this chapter was um, easier just because it ties everything together rather than introducing too many new concepts. Um, but yeah, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you, Brendan. That was uh, quite insightful. I must agree. It was actually really fun uh, creating that app and having that. So putting chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three all together into now creating this and now learning a bit of like the columns, which I think we had learned in um, chapter two. So it was, it was really nice. And thank you so much for the discussion. Yeah, I, yes, for um, regarding the statement you made, I think you can, you can formulate something and share that the Slack channel. And I'm pretty sure one of us can help us understand because that was also one thing that I didn't understand clearly why should I do have to do that but then uh, like you said we'll take it we'll take it as you've been told by the by the authors and from the notes we made um yeah, yeah. well this was quite a short meeting we though um yeah sorry I, I tend to um breeze or rush through these sorts of things um 
but yeah, maybe I'll, um, when Ryan comes back, we can ask him as well um, about separating computation from plotting in our apps, yeah. but yeah. Okay. So uh, we have, with that, we have finished our first, the first part. I'm really sorry about the background noise. So um, we have finished the first part. So we are getting into the second part in which is shiny in action. So we have uh, chapter five, which is we'll start with an introduction and then now we discuss the workflow. And um, so we get to see the shiny in action. I am checking like literally that. I haven't read to that chapter yet, but I so look forward. The, the previous four chapters were really nice. So you delay you as you are carrying out the discussion. So I will alter the dates because I think we are a, a week ahead as compared to the dates that are on the sign up sheets. So you delay that fine, but we'll carry the discussion for next week. Yes, for the workflow, I am ready for next week. Awesome. I like the motivation and the vibe. I look forward to the next week's discussion then. Uh, I think that was a short one, but like uh, Brendan has said, you can have a look at the last cohort's um, video. And if you have more questions, the Slack channel is our friend. So I uh, just reach out and someone will um, help you. That's OK. I wish you a good uh, evening, morning, and uh, do enjoy the rest of the day. And I will see you next week. Yep. Thank you all. See you next week. Thank you, Brendan. Bye. Okay. All right. Bye.